Hey everyone, it's Carrie Bradford, and today I am going to talk to you a little bit about Rad Lab. Lately I've had to pull it out to edit some photos, and so I thought it would be really fun to create a video to show you just how Rad Lab can just totally rock your photo world. I've had other Photoshop actions, and I've taken classes that will teach me how to edit photos and, you know, make them look good. But when all is said and done, I just want to click a button and I just want to do it fast and just get it done. And a while back I had edited this photo of Jordan and I had it up on my screen for a day or so. I have this tendency to not always close out of things. And I just sat there. If you can see right here, I have the Rad Lab that I have run on this. And I just sat there and I turned it on and off. That is what it looked like originally. It was a dark, cloudy day, that day that I had to go take these pictures of her. And it was also getting to be in the evening, and so there just wasn't a whole lot of light. And so that's kind of the result that I got. But I knew that I could go home and edit it. And using Rad Lab just makes it a piece of cake. And I just kind of just kept <laughs> sitting there turning it on and off because I was just amazed at how much of a difference just a few quick clicks of the button can make a photo go from, you know, okay, to wow, and to pop, and to make it look just lovely. If you've never heard of Rad Lab, you are just so missing out. It's from the makers of Totally Rad Actions and Pick Tap Go. If, and I just have to say that these are my go-to photo editing programs, hands down. I love, 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 love them. I've used Totally Rad Actions for several years, and I love them. And if you're familiar with those actions, Rad Lab has, I think, pretty much all of those actions just rolled up into one um, program that they have created. And I have to say, buying Rad Lab last year was one of the best purchases I've ever made. And let me show you why. First off, when you install the program, you'll get this little shortcut icon that you can put anywhere you want on the screen. I could move it anywhere. I could set it up here, whatever. I just have it down here in the corner with all of this stuff. So to start using Rad Lab on a brand new photo, you would just click on that and it will take you into that part of the program. Since this is a photo I've already edited, all you have to do is come in here and I can just click on this and it will take me into the program. As you can see here, these are the things that I have added to this photo already. The beauty of this program is that you can go through and see a preview of what's going to happen when you choose a particular style for your photo. So if say I wanted it a little bit brighter, I could come and I would just hover over the lights on it, it would just make it even brighter. And you can see that not only do you see it in a preview here, but if you hover over it, it changes the photo over here, which is lovely. I love how it works. And you can go through and you can see and just run your mouse along all of those different styles of things that you can choose to use on a photo. Again, so easy, so quick so fast I went through and started out with choosing let me well let's just undo all of these right here I'm in checking the the items that I added to this photo so I started out you can see again just how dark it was and I went ahead and added lights on and that just brightened it up a little bit and then I thought hmm let's go ahead and add some clarify this these the lights on clarify warm it up Chris the Sugar Rush and Oh Snap. These right here, these are my favorites. And all you, to add a favorite, all you have to do is just click and just drag it over here. And then you've got to add it as a favorite. And if you wanted to delete it, you could just hit delete. But these are the ones that I use all of the time. And if you notice right here, even if I hover over just the name, it's changing the way that photo looks, which is awesome. So even if you go to your, your favorites, it's showing you what it's going to do before you even click on it. Again, they, this is such a smart, smart program. So first off, I went ahead and put the lights on, and I just, you know, I moved it down to 75%. So you can change, as you can see, you can change just how, you know, the intensity of anything that you're choosing. And I'm just going to go ahead and put it back down 75 and just kind of go through my thought process when I was first editing this photo. Then I thought I'd add some Clarify. And Clarify, let's just go to that in here. You can see the difference between what I have and what it's going to do when I choose Clarify. You can already see it just brightens it up and makes it a little bit happier. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the Clarify that I have that I had already chosen there and I just decreased the intensity of it down to 73 percent. 
then I got to looking at it thinking, you know what, I think I want that a little bit brighter. So I went ahead and added the lights on. And again, it just enhances it. And I just feel like it's just making the photo so much prettier. And I didn't quite want it at that full intensity. So I went ahead and changed it down to 80%. And then I felt like it just needed just a hint of warmth. And so I just went ahead and added 28% for the warm it up, Chris. So if you notice, as I turn it on, you can see it just adds a little bit of warmth. If it's off, it, her face just kind of has a little bit of a, a, I don't want to say gray, but, you know, more of a cooler color. So those right there were my favorites for this particular photo. And as you go down through the different styles, you'll see the different things that you can add to this just to change the way your photo looks. And they're just so many fun things. Different, you know, you can do a, a flare up and we can go ahead and just add that and say we don't maybe want it quite so, you know, flary. You can change the flare size. So we could come down here and decrease that so it's kind of a little less flary across the whole photo. You can change the intensity and you can also change the toning. Some of the styles that they have have these different options that you can change within the photo itself. So a lot of this is just playing with it. And it's rather addicting, I have to say. Because <laughs> once you start, you can't stop. You're just like, hmm, I wonder what this one will look like. That's where I would say, would say this is the difference between using actions and using Rad Lab. And is that you see instantaneously, without necessarily having to click a button, what that photo is going to look like when you run that particular style on it. When you're using actions, you actually have to push play. Sometimes you have to alter some of these different settings, even within the action. And I like just being able to go click and then go, yep, I like that. Or no, let's just quickly change that. I just want to get things done quickly. I just don't have a lot of time to go in and edit photos. And Rad Lab helps you do that. So now let's say maybe we don't want to do the flare up. Let's just kind of go quickly down here and see some of these different options. You know, you can come in here and choose this rusty cage. And even though it looks really blurry, all you have to do is come down here into your options and just maybe change the strength a little. And then it just kind of gives it that rustic look without going too intense. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that one because I don't really need it. And maybe let's come down here and see what other kinds of things. Vintage color. So let's come in and see. I like that SX71. And then I'm just going to go ahead, and, before I start messing with SX70, I'm going to delete the flare up. But again, you can come in here and change the intensity of it. So you kind of get the look of it without having to go full force. And it's just, it's fun. And if I don't want to have it focused, defocused so much, I can take that intensity down. Again, fun look, easy to do, quick. I, I'm telling you, it's just awesome. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that one. Let's see what else we've got here. We can come down here and see, you know, Grandma's Tap Shoes. I love this one. Gla Grandma's Tap Shoes is a fun one, and Pool Party is a fun one. Again, we can just change the strength of it so that it just kind of gives you some of the appearance of it without having to go too intense. You know, makes it a really fun vintage-looking photo. I'm going to delete that one. And Pool Party. So you can kind of see there's a little bit of a difference. I kind of like Pool Party. It, depending on A lot of it depends on the colors of your photo. So pool party, grandma's tap shoes, those are all just real fun. And then you've got other things, you know, for black and white, you can come in here and change these things. And old school, that's a really cool one. That actually goes really well with the, the photo that she's in right now. If I go ahead and click on that and then just maybe change the intensity down a little bit so it's not quite so old, old school, you can see how it's changing. Watch this area out here and you can see how it's changing the intensity of that. You can see it gets darker the higher up that I go. It gets the burned edge keeps kind of keeps coming in more and more on that. One fun thing that you can do when you're playing with this is that, let me go ahead and just delete this. You can come over here and change what you see within this window. So I can come and say I want them bigger or I want them smaller and then you can see two by two. But me being you know, with my eyes sometimes the way they are, <laughs> it's easier when they're just a little bit bigger. But this way it allows you to see more of the changes you want to make all at one time. But I'm just going to go ahead and just kind of put them back up where they were. And some other fun things is that you can choose to see the full image. And since it's a big photo, that's what you're going to see. But I'll just go ahead and put that back on fit. 
You can change it to the before and the after. You can compare them so that they are side by side. And then you can also split the photo so you see what's the before and what's the after. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep it on after. Some other fun things that you can do is that you can save your recipes. So say I like how this works and you know I like to use it a lot. I want to just use it all the time. I could go ahead and click save. And no, that's not what I named it. It's kind of a default for the Rad Lab. It's not necessarily my <clears throat> recipe. So then I could just say, you know, brighten or something and then just say, okay. And then I will have this recipe saved and I can come over here and just go ahead and use it anytime that I wanted. Then you can come up here and you can choose to see some of these different things in your window. So if I just go ahead and click on that, it gets rid of the style library. So I'll just go ahead and click that back on. This is for the adjustments, some basic adjustments. Brightness, contrast, warmth, you can go ahead and add those. And these are for your favorites. So if I didn't want to see my favorites anymore, I could click off that. And then this is for the histogram. And I don't use that either. And then when you're done editing, all you have to do is click finish. And then you're back out here. And then you can do what I do and just click it on and click it off. <laughs> click it off and click it on. And it's just amazing. It is so, so fast. I love, 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 love this program. Let me show you one really quick other example. I have this picture of Jordan here. And I had run Rad Lab on this one before. I just added just a simple little bit of clarify. But I actually wanted to kind of go in and play with it just a little more. So I'm just, for the sake of starting over, I'm just going to go ahead and delete that particular Rad Lab later. And you can see this is where I started with. So again, it was in the shade, a little bit dark. You can see it's really bright out here. I'm going to go ahead and click on the Rad Lab button. And it pops me into the little program. Since I'm still on my recipes, I want to go ahead and, well, if you noticed, if I did brighten, look at how good that would look. But let's kind of play with this just a little bit um, from the beginning. So you can see here what each one's going to do as I, as I hover over it. I'm going to start out with some clarify. Let's go ahead and if I hover over my favorites, again, clarify, one of my favorites, I'm just going to go ahead and click on that. And again, it starts making it just brighter right there. Now I want to kind of add a little bit of a dreamy effect. So I'm going to come down here and find the Flare Up Faded, because that's a fun one. Flare Up Faded. So again, it just kind of gives it that dreamy, ethereal look. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that, but I don't want it to be quite so strong, so I'm just going to kind of slide my slider on down just a little bit, maybe 49%. So it gives it kind of just that warm, dreamy look. And then let's go down and find that SX70. Let's see. Let's go find that. Well, let's search for it. SX. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that one. But again, I don't want this to be as intense as... I'll just X out of that. Okay. So I don't necessarily want all of this to be at full strength. So let's start off by changing my strength down to, you know, around 45%. And it, that just kind of softens up the, the intensity of that SX70 style. And I think I want to not have it be quite so defocused. So I'm going to move that on down and let's maybe go around 26%. And then the contrast, let's see what happens when I slide that down. So you can see it kind of took away, you, that gives it a little bit more definition and depth in her cheeks as I start to roll it down instead of having it be so, like, that's what that would do is really, really make it stark. And then I'm just going to bring it down. All righty. So I kind of like the way that looks. I just, again, it's with the style of the photo, it's very um, dreamy is just the word that I want. And if I just go ahead and click finish, you can see it's changing it from what you're seeing right there. And sometimes it takes a second to chug through that. And voila. So again, changes it from that to that. And you know what? Maybe I don't want that flare up so quite so flared. So I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to maybe change this flare. How about the flare intensity? Let's change that down a little bit. So you can see what it went from, from 100% 
down to about 70%. So it just kind of took it off the, that flare just a little bit. And then I'm just going to go ahead and click finish. And then there's one more thing that's really fun to be able to do is because the Rad Lab is created with a layer mask, see this little white box right here? I can click on this. And if you notice, this is really blown out back here. What I can do is I can come in here and I'm going to set this so that my foreground is black. Oops. Let's set that so that the foreground is black. I'm going to select a brush and you can see I have a brush here and I'm going to use my right bracket key to increase the size and I am going to essentially erase from the mask. I'm not erasing from the photo. I'm erasing from the change that we just did and I have my opacity set to 48%. And that just means that it's only going to work at, you know, about half, half its value. And the flow is set to 62%. And basically what that means is that it's the, the area around the outside part of the circle is going to diffuse, for lack of a better word. It's just going to just kind of blur on out so that you don't get this, you know, solid circle of change. So if I start going like this in erasing, you can see immediately what that's doing to the photo back there. It's getting rid of some of that um, flare and it's taken away some of that yellow. If I come over here you can see immediately what it's doing. And so you can just kind of come in here and rub along that so that you can see maybe a little bit more of that background. And if you look over here on this side you can see where I have made those changes. It's erased that mask, that white box changes from white to gray or to black eventually if you keep going over and over it. So you can see I'm erasing even more because my opacity is set to 48% so we're not getting rid of all of it at one time where we can kind of come in here and change it as we need. And if we find that we want more of that Rad Lab filter back on the photo, you can see right here it's pretty dark. We've erased quite a bit of it. But all you have to do is come over here and switch it to white and you essentially are painting it back on so you can see how it's turning it back yellow back into that faded style that we had chosen. And if you look over here, we've gone back into a lighter gray. So that's another really fun, just quick little tip that you can do to kind of alter more of what your photo is doing with, with the Rad Lab filter. A couple other quick points. You can use Rad Lab in Photoshop CS3. Photoshop Elements 7 or later, and Lightroom 2 or later. So, again, awesome, awesome, awesome program. You will love, love, love this program. It will be a purchase that you will use over and over and over again, and the possibilities are truly endless. Okay, well, that's it for me today. Thanks for stopping by.